What's the word, y'all? Another controversial night in the association. The Toronto Raptors went to Los Angeles to go against the LA Lakers, and it was a one-point win for the Lakers. But the reason it's controversial is because in the fourth quarter alone, the Lakers shot 23 free throws while the Toronto Raptors shot just two. And that, of course, got a lot of people talking. I mean, the previous night, the Indiana Pacers won a game with a controversial ending with Jalen Brown and company. So it just feels like every single night, there's something to be said about the refs. And after this game, Toronto Raptors head coach Darko Ryakovich, I still don't know if I'm pronouncing his name right, went on a, a rant. Outrageous. What happened tonight, this is completely BS. This is shame. Shame for the referees, shame for the league to allow this. 23 free throws for them, and we get two free throws in the, in the fourth quarter. Like, how to play the game. I, all, I understand uh, respect for all stars and all of that, but we have star players on our team as well. How's possible is Scotty Barnes? who is all-star caliber player in this league. He goes every single time to the rim with force and trying to get, get uh, to, to the rim without flopping and, and not trying to get foul calls. He gets two uh, free throws for the whole game. How is that possible? How are you going to explain that, that, that to me? They had to win tonight? If that's, if that's the case, just let us know so we don't show up for the game. Just give them a win. But that, that was not fair tonight. And this is not happening first time for us. Scotty Barnes is going to be all-star. He's going to be the face of this league. And what, what's happening over here during the whole season, I've been holding you back. It's a complete crap. You ask me, that's one of the best rents of the, of the season so far. So when I initially watched this game, I didn't think too much about the fouls that were called against the Raptors, but it was instead about the lack of fouls called for the Raptors. But in today's video, I want to re-watch that fourth quarter and see on the second viewing, can we spot what's a foul, what's not a foul? Man, that game last night was crazy. Oh, Thanks, man. Bro. I can't believe I fell asleep on that. You fell yeah. asleep? I, I fell asleep. Mic check, one, two, one, two. Mic check, one, two, one, two. Yeah, I'm not hearing nothing. You got me, D-Mills? I'm not really getting much, KB. I think it's bugging. Man, I thought we would get a new audio guy today. Where he at? Morning, fellas. Hey, man, this is exciting. Eli's gonna be so jealous. We're both huge fans. Uh, you okay over there, buddy? Oh, I'm better than okay. I gotta tell you, after my last time of doing this, I thought there was no way I'd ever get hired again. It did not go well. Bro, ain't no way that's Peyton Manning. Yeah, it's me. I actually minored in podcast engineering at Tennessee, so I've been trying out a new career as an audio guy. Oh, don't worry about me, guys. Look, I'm gonna make your show sound awesome. Anybody know where I should set up? Uh, it's right over here, bro. All right, let's check some levels here, huh? What do you say? Omaha? Omaha? Omaha! I don't think those are connected. I need that. One of the coolest things I've ever shot. Some of y'all may know that I used to host a podcast named Through the Wire. We did it for seven straight seasons. It was fire. But this year, we decided to switch companies. And a part of switching companies was coming up with a new name, new YouTube channel, new Spotify, new Apple, all of those things. So this is my announcement that Saturday, the show is coming back under a new name, Numbers on the Board. The link will be in the description. Um, if you used to watch Through the Wire or you're oblivious to what it is, it's another NBA podcast with me and the homies. We drop two times a week. Saturday is our first episode. New set, new everything. I would appreciate y'all's support. The link will be in the description. So this is where we picked the game up. Uh, the Toronto Raps are up by three with 11 minutes left in this game. Um, here's the passage here of Vanderbilt. And I think we can agree that is a foul. No complaints from the players. Th that's how we go. That's how we go determine. One of the ways we'll determine is whether or not the players complain about a foul, and nobody did there. One foul correctly called. This fourth quarter took 40 minutes. It took 40 minutes. Now I'm zooming through the actual free throws, but it took 40 minutes. Little zone action. Jonte Porter has to say, anybody that's having to shoot a three shouldn't be shooting a three. <clears throat> right? Is that a fact? I don't know. Coach said that to me once upon a time. Uh, basically telling me to let it fly, even though I was like a career 20% three-point shooter, whatever. Coach had belief in me. All right, so we get another whistle on this play on Dennis Schroeder with D'Angelo Russell. D'Angelo Russell does a classic rip-through thing that we've seen a lot of players do because um, uh, Dennis Schroeder's hand is in the cookie jar. I think that's actually a foul um, just because his hand was on the arm and then he ripped through and, and caused a bunch of contact. Part of this, and this is a conversation we've had before, is just the... Um, the players are just too good 
when it comes to making it look like more contact was given than reality. And because of that, fouls like that and, and normal might not be fouls, but the way the game is called, it is a foul, if that makes sense. Scotty was great in this one. Watch him come right here for a block. Christian Wood thought it was a, a goal 10, but it wasn't even close. And then the recovery from Scotty to get two on one play. This bump is one to remember, right? This is going to look exactly the same way as an Austin Reeves foul later in this game where there's marginal amount of contact. I wouldn't call this foul either, but later in the game, the Lakers get a call that is very similar to this amount of contact. Where Anthony Davis, I think he played good defense. Scotty Barnes just gave him a bucket. But that little bump, that little contact, we see it later. That's all I'm saying. Here's a whistle in favor of the Raptors, and this is going to be their two free throws of the game. Scotty Barnes gets one. He missed the layup. But that's, that's their only shooting foul of this entire quarter and i think it's a good call so this is a foul call um and the raptors decide to challenge it now there's some contact to scotty barnes's face right there he might have sold it a little bit but the foul is not on scotty barnes it's a foul on emmanuel quickly with the push in the back here so they challenged it and they lost the challenge because I, I do believe that quickly did give him a little shove i mean it is what it is it might not be a great little thing but that amount of contact is enough and here's the replay again from a different angle. Full grasp of his back. S small shove. Small shove is just enough. You know, especially if he goes down tumbling, which Anthony Davis did. So they're going to uphold this. And this challenge was crucial because there's another play later in the game that if the Raptors had their challenge, I think there's a case for them to win. This one, they didn't win. Quickly gets called for a flagrant here. That's a lot of contact. Obviously not intentional. That's why it's only a flagrant one instead of a flagrant two. But I think that's the right call. I mean, Reddish ended up with some blood and everything. Like, that's a hard elbow to the face. Um, so I think that I think that's the right call. This is one of the questionable plays that people are pointing out on Twitter. There's a pick and roll with that. That b believes that he was pushed a little bit by Torian Prince on the back end. Let's see it. So the pass goes in. There's a forearm in his back from Prince as he tries to get the pass. But you can say that he doesn't even have possessions just yet. And it all happens so fast. Because Thad barely even comes down after the pass before the shot is on the glass. <laughs> like, he, he, it was one full motion. Now, he missed it. But it would have been such a nice play if he made it um, on the pick and roll spec. But, like, I don't know. I think I think that's a bang-bang play. And because it happened outside of two minutes left, we'll, we'll never know whether or not that's a foul or not. Um, and there's a swipe by RJ. And it's an N1. Now, I think these last two and a half minutes, we're going to see a lot more instances of maybe missed calls or some bad calls. This is the play I was referring to earlier where there's marginal amount of contact that, that Scotty Barnes didn't get and Austin Reeves get. And I think that the big problem is, is that the whistle was called way late. That's one of the main things. This whistle was called so late that it's like, were you waiting to see if the, the shot was going to go in before we determine whether or not it's a foul? And here's the slow-mo of it. There's undoubtedly contact. Do not get me wrong. And even right here, you can, I'm going to see if I can pause it on the second. Right here, Thaddeus's arm is in the basket. And again, Austin Reeves is one of the better guys when it comes to baiting fouls. He feels the contact there and he goes up immediately. It's very similar to what Scotty Barnes didn't get a few minutes ago, but they decide to call it. Like, look, there's the, oh, I'm trying to gather the ball. He's got the, <laughs> he's got the face to prove that there was contact and they call it but again it's after the shot look look the, look how late that is this is one that did not look like a foul in real time when i watched it let's see if it looks like a foul the second view it's going to be an offensive rebound for max christie he goes back up now obviously there's a swipe but i don't know if rj even made contact with him he gets the whistle now this is within the last two minute report so we'll find out if this was the right call or not here's the replay so we get a, an in-depth I don't, I do not think there's enough contact on that one. If I'm being honest, I don't think there's enough contact there. I think Max Christie went up and he flailed a little bit. And because his limbs was going this way and this way and this way, that they gave him the call. I don't really know if I can trust the last two minute report anymore though. Because after the Jalen Brown thing from a few nights ago, they said that was the right call. And I think everybody else in the, in the NBA world, the sports world thinks that that was the wrong call, but the last two minute reports said it was. So I just, I don't know what to trust anymore. We'll see. These last 30 seconds take 11 minutes. <laughs> the last 30 seconds takes 11 minutes because of the amount of intentionally fouls and stuff like that, timeouts. I mean, two for the Lakers, one for the Raptors. 
Um, I think this might be the play that got a lot of people up in arms where you're going to see the pass and then the screen from RJ, they call illegal. And they're going to show it the replay right here. Obviously, he was not set. That's not a set screen. But also, on the same thing, that happens in the NBA quite a bit. So, is this an inconsistency with the whistle? I do believe that it is a foul. But it's just a matter of when do you call it and when do you not. Because I've watched a lot of Warriors games in the last 10 years. I've seen that a lot. That's, that's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, I do think it's a foul. Um, but, you know, it's just like when do we call it when do we not. And from this point on, we play the intentional foul game. And from my research, the last 10 free throws of the game were intentionally foul free throws, right? So right now, the free throw disparity is two free throws to 13 free throws before we get to this point this is a foul to me this right here is a foul to me and in a one point game you want this whistle you need this whistle right it's not a one point game now but it finished at a one point game we're like max christie is just too young too small scotty Barnes. there's like there's like four points of contact right there if you ask me so i think that's a foul that they missed and i don't know if the last two minute report would say that even the lakers commentators are saying it and if you got the opposing commentator saying that, oh, they missed one, they probably did. They probably did. Um, so I, I honestly do believe they missed that one. At the end of this game, the Raptors hit some crazy shots. Here's Dennis Schroeder. Just, just faces up and throws it high off the glass for it to go in. Like, that's a that's a one of a thousand shot that went in. And then I, I think it was Pascal. I think it was Pascal that hit this shot. That's like just a high probability of missing and it goes in and um it ends up being a one-point game so whether it been that last play where we believe max christie fouled or the offensive foul on the screen that you may or may not believe in there are some moments in this game where the referees got it wrong i think that's subjective but i also think that on the paper free throw disparity doesn't tell the full story of the game because the last 10 free throws, again, were after the, the Raptors decided to intentionally foul. I think this is more of a case of the Raptors not getting calls versus the Lakers getting too many. Now, we do have the Austin Reeves play that I think is up for question. And then the opposite of that Scotty Barnes play that wasn't called. So I, I can see it both ways for sure. It wasn't, I think we can say that it wasn't a greatly officiated game. Darko Ryakovich has the right idea for calling it out. He's definitely going to get fined like crazy for it. And this whole season, I think, and I talked about this on the Kenny Beeson podcast, you should check it out, but this whole season has been uh, not a great one for refereeing. And I'm normally not a guy that talks about refereeing because it's a it's a human job. It's a hu human error job. But sometimes it goes a little bit too far one way or another, or we see some bad ejections. It, it's just a lot of power for the refs. So you let me know in the comment section what you think. Was the, the whistle for the Raptors more strict? The Lakers have a loose whistle. It's up for interpretation.